your thoughts when I asked you about this project? <laughs> the only thing I really felt was fear. Like, I'm frightened of it as a topic. Do you know why? Um, I think because I had imagined a lot of doctors in white coats for right. some reason, and that wasn't appealing. But, you know, once we were able to find a way in through a point of view that was beautiful and moving and between women, then I understood what we were, what we were doing. And once we were all there in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and we were collaborating together, then it was really clear it was going to be wonderful. Yeah. But up until then, I was <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I was. Psyched. I only did it for you. <laughs> yeah, not me. I was excited. Yeah. I was really excited. Are you? About it. Yeah, I think performance is um, like people think of theater and it's and as language based and opera is music based and I think they're both time based and so questions of like leaning into opera which relies so heavily on repetition. And the expansion and contraction of time, and that, like, it just seemed like such onomatopoeia to engage in a question about consciousness in the operatic form. And I was also, I mean, David talked to me about this right on the heels of breast cancer, my battle with breast cancer. So, it, for me, the opportunity to explore and engage, it's obviously not the same disease. Uh, but to engage, I, I inhabited a very interior space uh, during that, and it, it, for me it felt really right. It felt really yeah. right to step into a question of what, what an immersive illness was, uh, and, and also this question of time. So you had a very, very intelligent response, and I had an incredibly childish one. Well, no, because you were like, ooh, who wants to go? <laughs> I think it, it brings into focus these problems, that, especially if you, if you focus on the thing that you first reacted to, the sense of the lab coats and the, the diagnosis and, the, and even the sorrow of the family. Which, which Degeneration as, as, feeling, as an idea right, to yeah. work with. Like, <laughs> it just... I, Degeneration was a hard idea to work with. It's funny because I, on one side for me, that degeneration, what's, what's worrisome is the emotional, the clarity of the emotional direction. Yeah, mm. but that's what I meant when mm. I said degeneration, that mm -hmm. like you're only going down. Right. But that's not what we've done at all. On an abstract side, the idea of how do you make language and music degenerate or transform and how, how do, might they mix as they're transforming what yeah. happens to consciousness and that it seems like a very exciting way and how do you express that artistically seems like a well and it's completely away from the left I mean it's a love story yeah. it's about possibility it's somehow navigating this terrain of what's possible when things are when we let go of memory and we let go of Sanity. Yeah, like then what's possible? In reality. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That in fact that those might be inhibiting factors to love. Yeah. Because in a love story you always have an antagonist, and in this case it's reality. Right. Yeah, um, the enemy of love. And once we found our way in, like I mean, like I have to say, once I met you and you were you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> once we talked about what we wanted to do and that we were interested in the subjectivity of the disease, that it wasn't yeah, going to be yeah. about the children um, being tortured by a disease that turned their parents into zombies, and we were going to actually go into the point of view of someone with Alzheimer's, and we were going to show their magic realist surrealist world, then I knew we were going to do something that was yeah, yeah. so good. It feels very free. I mean, I have to say the piece feels, the collaboration feels free, but the piece feels free in this, it's just potential. It feels like there's a constant potential. I feel like we walked from that workshop in Halifax, Nova Scotia with quite a clear idea of who the characters were. And we knew that we were gonna have characters who were at different stages of the disease. 
and we knew that they would fall in love and that it would be a love story between two people. How much did either of you feel a, a necessity to say something? I don't, know, I don't want to say say something about the disease, but how much did you feel the weight of, of people who are directly dealing with Alzheimer's? I think I feel a weight to make sure that everybody is presented with dignity and compassion, like the, the, literally in the lighting, yeah. that these uh, the performers moving in a certain way, moving with a certain age, taking risks with their voice, you know, that, these, that they are um, supported in that journey in a way that is loving and exposed. I feel like that's... And that's a tricky combo. It's funny because in a very technical way, it's something that I've been thinking about during the course of this last workshop, mm. is how much, how much the singer's lines should be doubled, which gives, a, it gives them their note, gives yeah. them a security. Yeah. Um, and especially, it's, it's not an easy piece musically. It has this both expansiveness and it, it flips some different yeah, yeah. feelings. Um, and there is something in moments that's really, like the end that we were talking about earlier today, scene nine, where having a, an instrument playing along with a singer it creates completely the wrong feeling. Right. And having them the holding just in the space by themselves is exactly what we need. Yeah. But in other spots, I'm not, I'm not so certain about that. So yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it's a game of... It's a dance, yeah. Can we talk for a second about Flicka's voice? Yeah, Flicka's voice is Flicka's so voice. ridiculous. I mean, it's these beautiful. women are singing into and a place. So is Marietta. She's like, yeah. what? I can't even believe it. Yeah. I feel like I'm in like a trance or a coma when they're singing. I wrote that to a friend today. The, the opera was putting me in a trance. Yeah. Like it's like a fugue state mm -hmm. that I go mm -hmm. into when they sing, especially when they sing together. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. It it was really great to have a chance to work. <laughs> with both of them a little bit at, really right at the beginning of the project. Um, yeah. And to, especially with Marietta, um, I went out to Indiana and met with her uh, and found, like, together we found these th the amazing th spots in her, or her voice, or, or she probably knew about them. I just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I, I was able to hear them and, and hear these, uh, these really unique, special sounds that she was able to create that I don't know, but I bet she wasn't able to create in the same way 30 years ago when she was yeah, at the quote unquote of course. Of course. the prime. I mean, I have to say, these voices that they have, that's uh, it's these voices that are required for this story. And I love that we're saying that. I love that we're saying there's work, that there are other stories than what we're used to hearing, and these voices are required. It's not. Yeah. A favor. You can't sing it unless you have a voice that has lived this much. I think there is. There are certain. There's such a canon of roles in opera, yeah. and that things are defined by. People are defined by what role you are. Or you're a zirbinetta, or you, you know, you sing a certain role, and I don't. There aren't so many roles, especially these type of leading roles, for women or men who have gotten to a certain. Well, not so many. Is there any other opera with two women of a certain age in the leads, in the two leads? Is there one other opera? I mean, it's not that there aren't so many. There are none yeah. doing this. This is the only one. Probably someone will know one, but I... I can't wait to, yeah. in the comments section right, yeah. of where this video... If you know the other opera with two women in the leading roles of a certain age, write Write in. a comment. Yes, post the here. There's no such thing. Yeah. It is a melody on a melodic moment that carries meaning that might distract from the word, or that might take weight away from the word, unlike just saying, you soak my shirt on one thing. He thinks you can cover you. Do you hear what he's saying? He's like, you're not going to worry about the words like, when you hear my music. No, what you're saying is Don't nobody cares about your words. It's actually nobody a cares. where no one will listen Nobody's listening. this idea, we get the supers, if the supers do what I think they'll do, does, 
does David Devan review this? I'd like the supers for a two-day rehearsal in advance of that. Okay. Um, <laughs> right? This is where we make budget requests, right? Yes. So much we want the fries on the table. <laughs> no idea. Welcome to the movie.